hard work at the studio. <laughs> Thank you very much, brother. It's it's strange to see you on the other side of the camera. You should, you're normally this side. So uh, thank you very much for taking the time to join us today. No problem, Marshall. I can see as well you've got some very important discussions here on women's issues. So uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot to talk about. Absolutely. And today we've been talking about taking off the hijab. You know, in social media, the social media influencers of today, unfortunately, some of them are taking off their hijab. So that has been the discussion that we're having today. So why do you think that women are taking off their hijab? <laughs> Um, uh, social media, let's start with that, is a very powerful tool. Um, it's all geared towards the nafs. It's all about promoting yourself. Um, when somebody's got a camera and they can go live or they can uh, take pictures and use a bit of Photoshop and get people's attentions, this, the soul, the nafs, it thrives on this kind of things, about self-praise. We find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he talks a lot in the Quran, he informs us about the dangers of pride, the dangers of arrogance, the dangers of feeding your nafs. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to always be in control of ourselves. But with this new rise of social media, especially things like Instagram and, 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 and others, where you can promote your own self, and everyone's out there looking for likes or looking for self-promotion. So unfortunately, social media has its pros and it has its cons. And we've seen how it can really influence people greatly. SubhanAllah, we have many Islamic speakers who have millions of followers and they achieve some real great work on social media. And likewise, we have others who have gone the other way, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, social media is very powerful and it's a tool that can work for us, aiding and, and strengthening Muslims' characters, their beliefs and their Iman, or it can go the other way as well. Um, and the issue with social media is not just on the person speaking, but the followers as well, so it's two-way. Sometimes the people listening are affected, and sometimes the person who's on social media, when they get so much attention, when they get so many likes, when they get so many followings, and then they might get sponsorships and attention from companies and you know, a lot of money coming their way, they may also change. And this is a reality that we've got to, we've got to face. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, and absolutely. I heard, I actually read uh, some of the stories about these uh, female influencers that have taken off their hijab and they were saying that it was because they felt they weren't being true to themselves. Um, for me personally, if I'm true to myself, I'm being true to Allah. So uh, is their way of thinking correct? I mean, how can we sort of overcome this way of thinking? You know, so that's, that's a really good question. Um, the, when somebody says they're not true to themselves, um, that clearly shows that at one moment in time they were, and now they're not, so they've changed. And this reminds me of the dua that the Prophet وسلم, he used to make very often. He used to say, oh, the changer of the hearts, keep my heart firm on this deen. We know that the path to Jannah, the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's happiness is a long path and it's a difficult path. We know that and this is what the Prophet has taught us. To, so to stay on that path is very, very difficult and to come off that path is very, very easy because shaitan is calling you. Shaitan is trying to make you change the way you think, change the, get you off track and get you to follow his khutuwat. So yes, it's that when somebody says that, you know, they weren't true to themselves, what that basically means is that they've changed. You know, they've changed. They were okay before, when they didn't have that many followers, they were perfectly fine. But uh, as soon as, you know, some sponsorship, sponsorship deals came in and they're earning, you know, a lot of money, then they realized that they weren't true to themselves. So in reality, it's the change of the condition of our heart. And I just want to make mention here that Allah Almighty, he tells us in the Quran, that when we meet him on that day, he said, Allah SWT says, The day that your children or your wealth is not going to aid you or protect you, إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Except for the one who meets Allah with a good, sound, healthy heart. Mm -hmm. Connected with Allah. Mm -hmm. So we ask Allah to give us thabat, keep us firm on his path, and not allow shaitan to get us distracted. I mean, I mean, and I think it's really important that we do make dua for all the sisters out there to give us the strength because it can be difficult sometimes to wear hijab. So it, it, we need that. We need the duas to, to give us uh, the strength that we need. And what can we do in order to help to educate our children more and the youth so that they don't go off that path? Because it's so easy for them to follow these role models or these 
you know, nowadays, these nowadays role models. Um, how can we sort of guide them better so that they do follow the better role models of our the mothers of the believers and the, the, the pious women rather than these other types of role models? That's a really good question, mashallah. So uh, when we when we look at our youngsters, our youth, um, uh, the, the our sisters, brothers as well, keeping them firm, keeping them steadfast on our path, uh, it really comes down to a few things. Number one is actually understanding what we're doing. So as Muslims, when we're reading our salah, we're praying and you're reading Fatiha, how often are we saying, al oh Allah, keep us on the straight path. So we need to be aware of that, that we're on a journey and we've got to remain on this path. Number two, is that as Muslims, we've got to produce role models. You know, we've got to produce people that we can actually look up to. Like as Muslims, you know, youth, how many people can they really look up to who's a practicing Muslim say, yeah, mom, you know what? I want to be like that. Dad, I want to be just like him. You know, how many of them have we produced? So we've got to invest in our own people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells in the Quran, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ That in the Prophet you've got a great example, is a role model. Yet, you know, youngsters may say, oh, that was 1,400 years ago. I can't relate to that. Now it's a different game altogether. Fair enough. But yet, we should be able to produce youngsters uh, uh, brothers and sisters who are educated, who are intelligent, understand their religion, can practice the religion in the modern context. Yeah. And this will produce, uh, give our youngsters motivation. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, I would also like to add here, is that we have to um, teach ourselves and our youngsters that our Islam is not dependent on personalities. Our Islam is linked to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam not individuals. So you may love your sheikh who teaches you a lot, you know, helps you, guides you, you love him. Something might happen to him. That should have zero impact on your Islam because your Islam is with Allah and his messenger, not with people. Because people will go up and people will go down. That's the nature of life. So we have to understand our Islam is not connected to personalities. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and uh, in terms of... Um, the role models, like you were saying, it's very difficult to find those modern day role models. I mean, I was saying previously in the episode that we are all influencers. We all, everything that we do and we say has an effect or has an impact on somebody. So do you have any words of wisdom for just everybody? They don't have to be a, a scholar or anybody hugely knowledgeable, but just the everyday normal Muslim. Uh, do you have any words of advice as to how they can make sure that their actions and their words are going to give the right impact and the right impression? Yeah, very good. Uh, I like the way, uh, Sister, you said that we are all influencing one another. This is very, very true. We're all giving da'wah um, in some way or form or another, that whether, whether you're a Muslim or not Muslim, you're calling to your way by the way you dress, by the way you speak, where you sit, where you go. You're effectively telling people that this is the better way to do it. So you're always calling people to that. And as Muslims, it's very important for us. My general advice, very important for us, is to start producing real leaders, young, youngsters, start educating them, have institutions that are of quality, uh, encourage our youngsters to learn Islam, and encourage our youngsters to do well in education as well, not just Islamic education, but other education. They need to have a whole package. And then you will see how people will really be motivated and want to follow in that way. Um, so we have got a lot of work to do. We've got to produce influential people. And another, the final thing I, I would like to add as well, I know we're restricted for time, but the word relevancy, okay? It's very important that we, speakers, shuyukh, scholars, presenters, Islamic TV channels and all others, that we've got to make Islam relevant to people. Now, this is a sensitive subject, but we've got to be mature in understanding. When we say something relevant is that if I'm going to speak to a, a group of youngsters, okay? So I'm gonna to speak to a group of youngsters from London, from South London, maybe, you know, they're, they're off track, they're involved in knife crime, they're involved in drugs and all sorts. If I'm gonna go speak to them and I'm dressed completely different, right? the way I am, I'm, I, I go in a turban and I go in a, you know, thobe and I look completely different and I try to tell them that what they're doing is wrong, they're not gonna to wanna to listen because I look so different and I talk so different. So I've got to be relevant, and this is not un-Islamic, this is Islamic. Being relevant meaning you can sit in them and they won't feel as if you're alien and then talk to them in their language that they understand and get and convince them of what is right 
and what is wrong. So we've got to make our speech relevant. Our khutbas have got to be relevant. Our lectures have got to be relevant. Our TV programs have got to be relevant. They've got to talk about things that we think about on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And that's the way we'll get their attention. Absolutely, that's a very good point because quite often there is a generation gap, you know, between people who are giving the information or the knowledge to the younger generation. So we have to be able to relate to them um, and to the age group that we're that we're dealing with. And if we do have time, just for one more question, in terms of um, what does Islam say about those people who put the the dunya before the hereafter? Okay, so. Um of course, this is uh, a simple answer, is the fact that we are on a journey. Um, the Prophet Sallallahu he described his journey, he said, the example of myself is like a traveler, that we, our destination is Jannah, and dunya is like a tree, that we've just sat underneath that tree just to take a bit of shade, and then once we regain and we've got enough energy, then we take ourselves and move over to the next stage. This dunya is a journey, it's not a means it's not a goal, sorry, it's a means to a greater goal. And if we can educate our people to understand that, that look, it's not about amassing great amount of things, having the most amount of likes on Instagram or having the biggest house or having the best car. All these things are praised, by the way. Many of the Sahaba, they are multimillionaires. Islam does not tell us to be poor. Islam tells us to be rich. But the difference is that Islam tells us to keep our money here and keep our heart here and not to bring them on top of one another so that our heart is in control of the money it knows what to do but the problem today is that we've made this the the, the means the goal itself that we have turned this uh, into the dunya has become our goal trying to amass as much of it as we can and hence our objectives and our goals and life have turned upside down mm -hmm. so once we can really convince ourselves of the fact that our end goal, our destination is Jannah. We want to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want to be in the gardens that Allah has promised us. And the only way in which we can get there is by maximizing ourselves in this dunya. Mm -hmm. Then inshallah, mm -hmm. we will understand what is important and what is more important. Absolutely. That's uh, beautiful words. Thank you very much. Um, unfortunately, brother, we have to leave it there. I'd, I'd love to continue talking with you, but we do have to leave it there. Um, so thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you for all your, your wisdom and your knowledge. And may Allah continue to bless you and keep you on your path of, of knowledge and, uh, and grant you Jannah, inshallah. I mean, I mean, thank you very much. I would like to thank everyone, Sister Vanessa, yourself first and foremost, and all of those behind the camera as well. Huda TV is very blessed and dear to my heart. I love every second of, of, of this channel and every effort that it puts. It's, it's great work. MashaAllah. Allah bless you all. And, and to you too, brother. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Well, brothers and sisters, uh, once again, thank you to Brother Junaid. And unfortunately, we do, we've do we come to the end of the program, but just a final word to sisters. Just always think, always think, what will you say to Allah on the day of judgment if you've taken your hijab off? What will your answer be to Allah when he questions you about that? And again, I will say, please everybody make dua for our sisters, including myself, that we maintain that strength that we need to please Allah because this is why we do it, in order to please Allah.